God will speak something to you today that will change your life. Speaking on the subject, the power of thought. The power of thought. Proverbs chapter 4 and in verse 23, it said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Verse 25 said, let your eyes look right on. Let your eyes look straight before thee. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. This night, we're going to be looking at this message in three ways. Number one, understanding the power of thought. Number two, understanding the focus of thought. And number three, understanding the enemies of thought. First, understanding the power of thought. Second, understanding the focus of thought. And number three, understanding the enemies of thought. We are in a season right now where Many of us will be overwhelmed with all manner of thoughts. Just overwhelmed. Diverse thoughts. Diverse pressures on the mind. It is important to know that one of the most powerful weapons of life is the weapon of thought. Thought can make a life. Thought can mar a life. Thought can raise a life. Thought can ruin a life. Thought can assist someone to end in eternity in heaven. Thought can assist another person to end in eternity in hell. Thought has brought the greatest blessings upon the world. Thought has also brought the greatest damnations on the earth. A man by the name of Hitler wanted to rule the world at one time and that led to the devastation of the earth question is how powerful is thought number one thought determines result thought determines results scripture said guard your heart where we read just now with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life Thought determines result. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, very popular. He said, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Quality of thought determines quality of result. Quality of thought affects quality of destiny. No matter how hard you try, your life can never rise above your thought. Anywhere you have found your life, that is where your thought has permitted you to be. If you go to the village, the rural settings, when you hear them communicate, the, 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 the thought is so low. The thought is majorly centered on survival. That is why they survive. They are just in the survival mode. You go to places like the motor park, and you hear the people talk, the conductors and all that. Their thought is so low, so mundane. Little, little things are the things that cross their mind. That is why their lives are the way they, the, the, the lives are that, like that. Your thought determines your result. It determines your destiny. When you toy with thought, you toy with the, fu the future. When you toy with thought, you toy with destiny. So thought determines results. It determines destiny. Number two, thought fuels action. And action determines manifestation. Thought fuels action. And action determines manifestation. In Matthew chapter 15 verse 19, it said for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts and these evil thoughts flow into murders 
adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, etc. He said these are the things which defile a man. These are the things which defile a man. So you see how thought fuel those things. If you proceed further, you will look in the book of Mark chapter 7 and in verse 21, he said, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, which will now flow into adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. He said all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Hallelujah. Your thought is that powerful. To think it is to act it later. To think it now is to act it with time. To think it now is to manifest it with time. The point is, if you don't want to act it, then don't think it. The point is, if you don't want to manifest it, then don't think it. People commit suicide after they have thought about it for a while. They have calculated all the options. They have allowed depressive thoughts for a while. Why am I alive? What is life all about? Is God, is God even aware that I exist? People are talking of coronavirus. What is worrying me is even worse than coronavirus. You hear people talk like that. And then they keep on thinking such depressive thoughts until one day will say, just take your life. People rape people, rape children and so on. They've been calculating it for a while. It's in their thought. Then they acted it out later. Criminals. In those days, the, 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 the thieves of those days will assess a house in the daytime. Think about it very well to rob it in the night. Thought fuels action. Action proceeds to manifestation. Action determines outcome. And action also determines reaction. Right? Your thought moved you to act in a criminal way and you get the reaction of it. You end in a jail. Your thought moved you to act in a shameful way and you get the reaction later. So thought is powerful. Thought determines results. Thought fuels action. And action determines manifestation. Number three, thought sponsors change and transformation. Yes, Thought it sponsors change and transformation. If you look through the scripture and you look at that in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the living God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When the mind is renewed, life is upgraded. When you re renew your mind, you upgrade your life. When your thinking changes, your life changes. When your thought pattern is revealed, your destiny is revitalized. The prodigal son said in Luke chapter 15 verse 17, how many hired servants, the Bible says when he came to himself, that is thought, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to eat and I perish here with hunger i will arise when his thinking changed his living changed when his mentality changed his reality changed every reality around you today is a product of your mentality you know thought carry presence please understand
that your thought determines your result your thought determines your action and manifestation and your thought sponsors your change and transformation you don't like how your life is change your thought number four thought bets ideas and inspiration thought gives birth to ideas and inspiration in proverbs chapter 20 verse 5 the bible says counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters he said a man of understanding will draw it out counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters he said a man who thinks will pull out the wisdom inside him in proverbs chapter 18 verse 1 he said through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom the place of thought is the place of ideas when you sow the seed of thought you can reap the harvest of ideas the place of thought is the place of wisdom the place of thought is the place of divine ideas those who are too busy to think are too busy to be wise those who are too busy to think are in a hurry to fail those who are too busy to think are in a hurry to end as fools wise people think and because they think they become wiser and when they act and talk they set you thinking don't worry through problems think through problems example in the circumstance i found myself in life now forget forget about coronavirus because it will soon be over what do i do to move my life to the next level number one i can do this number two i can do this number three i can do this number four number ten out of these ten things which three are the top topmost priority that can make me achieve the results fastest and quickest with little stress one two three until you sit down to do that you will never get anything thought bets ideas and inspiration number four or number five thought bets possibility it bets possibilities you remember the tower of babel genesis chapter 11 verse 1 he said the people is one god speaking and this they have imagined to do this they have begun to do and nothing shall be restrained from them which they have taught to do if they can think it is possible ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine if we can imagine it we can think it it is possible listen only what is a possibility to the mind can be a possibility in life possibility is a child of mentality anything that is too difficult for your mind to grasp will be too impossible for your hand to handle hallelujah nobody arrives anywhere by chance you arrive there by faith coupled with the right mentality that place called the glory dome did not just happen it was seen far before it happened seen far before it happened so thought bets possibility that is why i can advise you today beloved brothers sisters don't imprison your life and imprison your destiny by the wrong thinking number six 
thought births divine response. Thought gives birth to divine response or in fact answers. And that depends on the content of the thought. God hears and answers thought. I'm sure you are, you are aware of this passage in the book of Isaiah chapter 65 and in verse 24 he said that it shall come to pass that behold while they are yet and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear what is the meaning of that before they call they haven't opened their mouth yet but I can perceive what is in their mind and I will answer it from their mind Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 20 say unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine imagine God answers thoughts once they are correct thoughts, once they are rightly activated thoughts. Thoughts can activate answers from God. And let me say this, and if I say it in the light of these two scriptures, it is not extreme. That the right thought can weigh as heavy as the right prayers before God. He can weigh equal. He will unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. You can ask his prayer. Imagine his thought. While they are yet speaking. That is at the thought realm I have heard. So please. Anywhere you want to go. Let it fill your mind. Whatever you want God to do for you. Feel, let it fill your mind. See it. Picture it. See yourself there. See yourself. As I was just speaking, I just see you in your husband's home with your children. See yourself healed. See life beyond this quarantine period. <laughs> see life beyond the shutdown. See life far beyond. And see what you can achieve with the time we have before Jesus Christ comes. Thought provokes divine response. Number seven thought and that is the right thought attracts the voice of God the voice of God can travel inside the right thought many of us have heard God many times or you thought you were thinking especially when you were thinking on the right things thinking on scripture inside that thought was an interruption of something that looked like a thought but wasn't a thought because it didn't originate with you you know you couldn't have originated that in the course of that thought, thought process in Acts chapter 10 10 and in verse 19 the Bible said and as Peter thought on the vision the Holy Ghost said as Peter thought on the vision the Holy Ghost said God speaks to those who know how to think and think correctly God speaks to those who know how to think and especially those who know how to think correctly. The same thing happened to Mary, I mean sorry, Joseph, the husband of Mary. When Mary got pregnant and the angel, I know and he was wondering what has happened. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. While she th he thought, a vision, a revelation appeared. As I speak right now, there are people, God is opening your eyes, opening your ears, opening your spirit. From this moment forward, you begin to hear clearly and see things clearly in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that Satan can also speak to people who are centered on evil? When somebody thinks evil so much, they say, stand up, kill him, kill him, kill him. He has offended you too much. Just kill him, finish him. 
what was what happened judas is carrot in in john chapter 13 verse 2 his mind was so evil until satan put in his heart to sell jesus so what you think can determine what you hear you can hear the voice of god or hear the voice of the devil based on your thought what have you learned so far first that thought is very important and that thought determines results and the quality of your thought determines the quality of your des destiny that thought fuels action and your actions will determine your manifestations and then determine the reactions you get from manifesting like that that your thought sponsors change and transformation that when your your mind is renewed your life can be upgraded that thought can bet divine ideas ideas that can shift your life forward thought bets possibility that god answers your thought thought provokes divine response and answers and of course finally that thought can attract the voice of god hallelujah i'm sure you've learned something very very impactful this season where we are at home to ensure that we engage the thought productively and profitably and i believe that your life will never remain the same what should be the focus of our thought what should you think on number one the word of god the word of god the bible said this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth in psalm 1 and in verse 1 to 3 shall not depart out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success this book of the law shall not depart of you out of your mouth but you shall think on it day and night joshua chapter 1 verse 8 let's look at that this book of the law okay i've quoted I quoted, I quoted that already. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate there in day and night, that you may observe to do according to what all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good sources. The other one says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3 but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper that's you put the word in your mind either the word you are listening to via cd or the one you are reading from the book or the one you are opening directly to study every one of those let, let that fill your mind let that let that be continuously in your thought think the word of god is focus number one number two is the works of god the works of god the works of god psalm 119 verse 99 said i have more understanding than my teachers because your testimonies are my meditation what you what what you what you have done the things that I have heard that you did, I think about them. Hallelujah. They are my meditation. Psalm 77 verse 12 said, I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Think over what God has done in your own life. Think over what God has done in the life of others. Think about the almightiness of God. You have these seeds of destiny. This is the time to look at the center pages and all those pages that have miracles and testimonies. And I think that very, very soon we'll, we'll actually do a compendium of just miracles and testimonies and things. For times like this, you just read them page by page by page. It explodes your faith. It causes you to believe God for the unusual. It causes you to be afraid of nothing. So you think on the works of God. Number three, think on the desirable and lovely. The desirable and lovely. The desirable and lovely. You remember? Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. 
whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. The Living Bible says, fix your thought on this. Is it true? Is it honest? Is it just? Is it pure? Is it desirable? Does it have excellence? That is the meaning of that virtue there. Is it praiseworthy? That's where to focus your thought. He's telling you, don't think on what you don't want. Don't waste your mind dwelling on what you don't like. Don't waste your mind dwelling on where you don't want to go. Invest your thought in the direction of what you want to do, of, 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 of what is desirable, what excites you, what you would love to see. Think about it and think about how to get there. So the works of God, so the word of God, the works of God, the desirable and the lovely. Number four is the path of purpose and destiny. Let that occupy your mind. What am I going to do with my life? How impactful will my life be in the land of the living? What will I be remembered for? What mark am I making on the sands of time and eternity? He said in Proverbs where we read, he said, let your eyes look right on. Proverbs 4.25. Let your eyelid look straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Let your ways be established. How can I make my life more useful to God? How can I make my life more profitable to my generation? How? Fix your mind on this. What would I love to be remembered for in the land of the living? Fix your thought. The path of purpose and destinies. And finally, what I call the priorities and posteriorities of life. Think about what you want to put in front of you. The passage we just read also covers it. Ponder the part of your face. Don't look left or right. Just face front. What have you been doing that is profitable that you can do again and again? In what way have you engaged your life and your time that has not profited you that you need to put behind? Truth is there are some friends around you that may, you may need to put behind. You don't hate them. But they haven't added anything to your life. They are actually very demanding of your time. Demanding of your patience. Demanding of your love. Demanding of everything. Maybe, maybe a, a, a job situation. So whatever. Maybe a habit. You kept on what you need to do today. You put it. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. So, these are things to think about. What are the things I am meant to put in front of me now to pursue? What are the things I am meant to put behind? You do that. And then, you are set for a glorious and explosive destiny. What's the focus of your thought? Number one is the word of God. Number two, the works of God. And God himself is almightiness. Number three, that which is desirable and lovely. Number four, the path of purpose and destiny. Number five, pri the priorities and then the posteriorities of life. There are enemies of thought. What are the things that are enemies of thought? Number one, fear. When you allow your mind to be choked with fear, it is impossible for it to productively reason. You have, you have just one mind. You can't use it to fear and think at the same time. Fear. You deal with fear. You deal with, in fact, there are situations where people are so afraid that I, I, I used to have a, 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 a classmate in the, in the, in the, in the university a levels and the university one of the most intelligent people you have ever met but once it is examination time fear will be so overwhelming that it is possible
to write the wrong thing out of here. That is physical shaking, physical vibration. People forget what they knew because of fear. They remember it outside the exam hall. So it's not possible to think straight and think well in the climate of fear. Deal with fear by the word of God. The fear of not getting married. The fear of what befell your mother or father befalling you. The fear of not fulfilling your days. The fear of whatever. Number two is worry and anxiety. Where a person is tensed up, overly tensed up, and worry is the opposite, opposite use of the mind. Thinking makes you to profitably imagine the future and strategically arrive at the way to get there. Worry keeps you in the past and the present. When you worry, you are combining the failures of yesterday with the challenges of today and the uncertainties of tomorrow. You just mix, mix everything together. Failures of yesterday, challenges of today, uncertainties of tomorrow. And you allow all these things to weigh down your mind and then it chokes your, your, your mentality. You can't think anything out. And don't forget, when I say think, I am not saying worry. Worry is, use, is a useless use of the mind. Where you are just focused on the problems and you are not, and, 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 and just thinking of how impossible it is. Thinking is breaking the problem down and reasoning your way out of it and reasoning to the next level worry and anxiety number three is corrupt and filthy intakes into the mind it's not possible to be a pornographic addict and have a mind that is useful it's not possible to be hooked up permanently to movies and these days we have movies that are suggestive of all manner of things. Man kissing woman, all manner of things inside there. And this chokes your mind and then your mind is focusing on the story in the movie, the line in the movie, what this person did or what this person said. And it just chokes the available, it took so much terabytes. Yes, it took so much space in your mind. And you are unable to use it to constructively arrive at your future. Corrupt intake, filthy intake into the mind. The mind is so choked up. Busy thinking of a girl or a man or somebody all day long. Busy thinking of something. You will never be able to use that mind to achieve anything. Number four is sin, outright sin. This is not, not just taking in, in, in the intake of uh, of um, garbage into your mind now. Not destroying the mind with those viruses now. But outright sin. Alcoholism affects the mind. There's something we call alcoholic dementia. It is excitatory in low doses and depressive in high doses. According to what we know. It has a negative returns iniquity 17 year old 18 year old young man failing in school young girl because her mind is filled with the thought of a boyfriend sin it affects thought number five is unforgiveness or bitterness where your mind is so choked with negative emotion negative emotion you are thinking about all the people who have offended you, how terrible the offense is, how you are going to revenge and retaliate and all the things you want to do. And in fact, you won't give anybody time to take you for granted anymore. And all these things fill your mind. You won't be able to constructively reason your way to your, to your, to your future. You leave them, leave, hand their case over to God, leave them in the hands of Jehovah and move forward. Most times, when you don't release people, you have not released yourself. Holding people holds you down. It holds your mind. And number six is depression. I mean, depression is a mental condition. That is mind dysfunctioning. So when you allow yourself to be weighed down by depression, 
Why is my life like this? When will God change my story? And all those kind of thoughts. Depression. You wouldn't be depression deprives of inspiration. I said to people, I say, when you are tensed, your mind is fenced. It doesn't pay. That was why Jesus said, how many of you, by taking thought, being depressed and being worried and, and being anxious, can add one cubit to your life? These are enemies of thought. There may be more, but these are en basic enemies of thought. And as you deal away with these enemies of thought, I see a new day and a new season in your life in the precious name of Jesus. Go on ahead, lift up your hands and lift up your voice. Anywhere you are, you can be upstanding in front of your television, in front of your house and just appreciate God for what you have received so far. Father, we give you the praise and give you the honor and give you the adoration. Ancient of days and lily of the valley and rose of Sharon, Jehovah Mekadesh and Karen Yesha, Ola More, we worship you, we honor you, we adore you. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you, Master, for what we have received. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name.